This is theta 1, so this must be theta 1. And then we could use Snell's law to find theta 2. OK, and now we're going to prove there must be some angle at which we cannot have reflective light. And let's see how, why that is. When the light comes in, that causes the dipoles in the glass to oscillate. And we know which way are they oscillating. They're oscillating this way, the same as the direction of the electric field. And this is the oscillation that's creating this reflected ray. Remember, said this is the oscillation that's creating this reflected ray. It creates both the, reflect, the transmitted and the. I believe so. I believe so. Yes, that's right. That's right. But we're going to focus on how it creates the reflected ray. So this is the oscillation that creates this. But remember we just said an oscillation cannot create a wave that travels in the direction that it's oscillating. So the way I've drawn this is impossible because the electric field is oscillating in this direction, but the reflected ray is parallel to that. Remember that the ray can never be parallel to the direction of oscillation. That just doesn't happen. You never have a ray that's traveling um, parallel to the direction of oscillation of the magnetic uh, of the uh, electric dipole. We just learned that as a fact. We learned that the ray always propagates to the sides of the oscillation, but it doesn't propagate in the direction of the oscillation. So the picture I've drawn here is the impossible case because I've drawn I've drawn this so that the reflected ray would have to be parallel. I've drawn this so that the reflected ray would have to be uh, parallel. Um, to this new electric field over here, but that's impossible. Since this ray is supposed to be generated from this, it wouldn't actually be traveling in this place. And then it, it can't go... So there, there are... Uh, but there wouldn't there be ones all around it? Yeah, I, I think I see what you're saying. Now, that doesn't mean there's no reflected rays, because remember, this is not the only direction that oh, the electric field was originally oscillating. It was that. also oscillating into and out of the board. And over here, then, there will also be something oscillating into and out of the board. And that's not going to be parallel to this. Yeah. This oscillation is not parallel to this. So what we get, though, then, is that this is a way that we get polarization. Oh. Now this light is going to be polarized. Now the electric fields that are generating this are only oscillating into and out of the board. I can't draw that so well anymore. But remember, we can draw things that are going into and out of the board with a dot and an x. Right. So the dot and the x here represents that at this point, this um, is only coming from the electric fields that are oscillating into and out of the board. Oh. Maybe over here I should have drawn. It's hard to draw this on the board. Yeah. But originally, the electric field was oscillating both in the plane of the page and into and out of the board. Because both of these directions are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the light here. So originally, we had unpolarized light. And this light down here can still be oscillating in both directions. However, only these oscillations into and out of the board can generate the reflected ray, because the reflected ray would be perpendicular to those oscillations. This oscillation cannot generate the reflected ray, because it would be parallel to the reflected ray. And we said that doesn't happen. Rays are not generated parallel to the oscillation of the electric field. So the light along this reflected ray is now polarized. Oh, so you won't, if the original ray was polarized, and if the original ray was polarized, then you might not, if the original ray was polarized not to have this component, then you wouldn't get any reflected light at all. So I kind of misspoke at the beginning. I said we were going to go over a case where there would be no reflection. Yeah. Well, what I should have said is actually, this doesn't usually give us no reflection, it gives us polarized reflection. Uh -huh. If you put in polarized light, I'm sorry, if you put in unpolarized light, and you're at this, uh, at this key angle here, you'll still get reflection, but it'll be only, uh, the only light that gets reflected is polarized so that the electric fields are oscillating in only one direction. On the other hand, though, if the original light was polarized, if the original light was polarized to only be oscillating in the plane of the page, then you really would get no reflection at all. So uh, there's lots of ways to make good test questions here because it depends on what type of light you, uh, what type of light you put in. So maybe we'll finish up by doing a couple of quick examples like that. So um, again, this doesn't always happen, remember. This would only happen if this oscillation is parallel to this oscillation over here. Um, after all, in, in a normal case, you could easily get something like In this case, the transmitted, uh, this new electric field isn't parallel 
to this reflected light, so we wouldn't have to worry about this uh, this uh, issue here. There's no reason why this can't generate this because the reflected white ray is not traveling parallel to these new oscillations. So it's only at a certain angle. It's only at a certain angle that this line is exactly parallel to this line. It has to be when these are perpendicular to each other. Uh, if this line is perpendicular to this, you can see these are parallel. This is what's called the Brewster angle, and it turns out that you figured out with this equation. It turns out that this is the equation for what's called the Brewster angle or polarizing angle. So this would be how you would find, so we would call this now instead of theta 1, we'd call it theta p. So obviously n2 would be this index refraction, and n1 would be this here. Um, there's a little geometrical argument in the book for why this is the right equation, but I don't think we have to prove that. It's a little bit too complicated for you to have to prove, so we'll just memorize this equation. Um, it turns out this is the right equation, but what does this equation for? This is the equation for when the reflected light would have to be parallel to the transmitted light's electric field oscillations, and therefore these electric field oscillations can't really generate that transmitted light. So let's, uh, let's do uh, a couple of applications and then uh, finish up. So some of the problems might just be plug and chuck when you just plug into the equation. But if it's a conceptual problem, it might be something like this. So let's say we're at, this is called the polarizing angle or the Brewster angle. You want to make sure you don't confuse this with the critical angle. The critical angle is for total internal reflection. Usually, um, that's more important. But actually, I did see an exam question where your instructor talked about the Brewster angle. But this is not the critical angle. All right, so let's say we're at the polarizing angle. Let's say we're at the polarizing angle. So let's start with, let's say we have unpolarized lights. So the electric fields here are oscillating in all different directions. Uh, they can oscillate uh, like this and like this. So what types of oscillations will we get in the transmitted light? In the plane, uh, perpendicular to the plane, or both? Um, you'll get it in this transmitted light. Same one as that one. So there's no reason you can't have both of these oscillations. Yeah. And how about in the reflected ray? They'll both also. Right. Now remember well, that we're well, at the polarizing can, angle. You can't have um, the one in the plane. Yeah, you can't have that. Because you can see what would happen if we try to draw the one in the plane. It'll look like this, and it'll be right along the ray. Well, this is what doesn't happen. You never have electric fields oscillating parallel to the ray. We haven't quite explained why that is, but we've just memorized that. Electric fields don't generate a ray parallel to the ray. Well, we, we kind of know that. Remember that uh, the, uh, the field is supposed to be propagating perpendicular to the electric field, not parallel to the electric field. OK. Um, so um, here, you would have to get, uh, could we still get the in and out oscillations? That's the reason that there's any transmittal, that's the reason there's any reflection at all. No. So is this light polarized? No. Is this light polarized? No. Is this light polarized? Yeah. yeah. So here, these two rays would be unpolarized, but the reflected ray would be polarized. Um, so to back up for a second, this sometimes happens, say, um, with light that's bouncing off the snow, say if you're out skiing. Um, some of the light that bounces off the snow is polarized. Now, at first, this might seem surprising because sunlight is not polarized. Sunlight is not polarized, but if it hits the ground at the Brewster angle, then the reflected light is polarized. And then if people want to cut down the glare from that reflected light, they wear polarized sunglasses. And why do the polarized sunglasses work? Because um, you can orient the polarization of the sunglasses to cut out this oscillation over here. There's only one oscillation that's hitting you now, and you can orient your sunglasses to, um, to reduce that. Remember, that doesn't mean that you're going to be totally blind, because if the orientation of the sunglasses is right, they'll still let through a component of this oscillation. But they're not going to let through the whole thing. So that's the idea of polarized sunglasses. Um, polarized sunglasses are uh, especially effective when you're getting hit by polarized light, because then you can adjust the sunglasses to only give you a component. Most of the light that bounces off won't be polarized. Yeah, you know, I don't really understand that. So uh, I don't really understand why you would expect. So people always uh, talk about wearing these polarized sunglasses when they're in, when they're in ski slopes. But I, uh, I don't understand why you would normally expect the light to be at the Brewster angle. The Brewster angle is only one angle. 
Um, I don't understand this. Although it might be, maybe when you're close to the Brewster angle, you get partially polarized light. I haven't thought this through all the way, but maybe when you're close to the Brewster angle, you get partially polarized light, and then the polarized sunglasses still would have, uh, would still be somewhat helpful or have an effect there. Okay. I guess we won't have time to go through all the details there. I don't quite uh, have that all under control myself. Okay, so anyway, that's one example.